But yeah, welcome back to my channel. This is Yuan again from Saya to Z Kimono. As a kind of a change today, I wanted to talk about something different than just another tutorial. As for today, I wanted to talk about the various types of kimono that there are out there. There seems to be kind of a mixed conception that kimono means yukata. Well, no. <laughs> there are about to give or take 10 different formalities of kimono out there. The difference is basically between the type, uh, the type of fabric that is used, the way it looks, as in the placement of the pattern. Now, the shape itself is completely the same. The length of the sleeve might vary, but that is usually just about it. So, I just wanted to explain what those formalities are, how they look like, and such. I don't um, personally have all of them, because uh, either I don't want them, or I just don't have them. The one them is yeah, kind of the more bridal section of kimono. I, yeah, okay, they're very pretty, but in my opinion they're just not wearable on um, an everyday basis, so I t try to stay away from them in the usual case. Well, So for those kimono that I don't have, I'll show a picture of what they look like, so that you can compare them with other formalities of kimono. So I will show you one of the ones that I have now, uh, starting with the more formal ones. So let's go. So as you can see, the black one over there, that is called a kuro tomesode. Kuro basically means black, and as you can see, it just has the design on the bottom. Kuro are basically are the most formal kimono for a married woman as it has crests as you can see over there and here over the edge it still has a few others like this one will end up in the chest area and this one on the back of your sleeves this one particularly is a, a summer one, as you can see it's kind of see-through. They're quite distinctive because they only have a pattern here. And because of the more formal, this they will have an extra layer inside. Basically, they, they will only have an extra uh, layer on the skirt part, the sleeves, and the collar. It is because in the olden days, they used to wear a full extra layer underneath, between the under kimono and the kimono itself. And because yeah, nowadays it's not really done anymore, so they just sew these layers to kind of mimic what they did in the olden days. Personally, I am not allowed to wear these, but as I'm outside of Japan, they're more forgiving about that. And this one over here. I'm not sure if it turns out to be blue or purple, but this one is actually purple. This is one for unmarried women, the most formal ones. This is a furisode. I think most of you will recognize this. This is not, not my first one, but the one I actually wanted to start with first, but glad I didn't. They're kind of... The trademark is the, the long sleeves for an unmarried woman. First order means, if I, on the top of my head, swinging sleeve. Well, 
the sleeve is over 1.1 meter long also 110 centimeters again it has all patterns all over no crests but a beautiful pattern on the skirt as well this is kind of worn to a uh, coming of age ceremony and other very very formal events like weddings and such this is the one that you would wear also at a wedding but they are kind of different they are usually worn trailing along the floor but this one is just a regular one uh, you can see you kind of see my yukata <laughs> But I will show you a pic of what a bridal fury sword looks like. On to the next. This is a homongi. Basically visiting wear. This one right over here. They can be worn with yeah, any visiting events or even at kind of presentations and such. They usually have a flowing design that goes from the front, front panel, all the way to the inner panel. And here on sleeves. They might have patterns over here. This one does not. But the other two homongi that I have do both have a pattern here on the right shoulder. This one can any woman just can wear it. Unmarried, married. And there's just another variety of this one, which is called a tsukisage. The difference between it is that they have a single pattern over in this panel, single pattern in this panel, single pattern in this panel. The design doesn't flow all the way just like this one does. Again, I don't have that one but I will show a picture of it in the, in the description so that you can kind of see what they look like and that you can compare it to this one because the formality between those is somewhat similar. I wouldn't say exactly the same, but somewhat similar. So there you have it. Oh, monkey. Visiting where? And so excited we'll would go between these two. And this plain one, well, not exactly plain, as it has woven design this one is called a iromuji I usually refer to as a little black dress because you can wear it to all kinds of events it only depends on what kind of over you wear with it this one has just all over woven designs that is kind of the trademark from an emoji, it cannot have any dyed designs, only woven in. This one has kind of a sakura pattern and which is cherry blossoms and chrysanthemum. Also, yeah, I don't know the exact term, but in English it's called yeah ripped paper. No idea where that came from, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a kind of little black dress of kimono. Now let's move on to the more casual ones. So as you can see, these are the more casual kind of kimonos, characterized by the all-over pattern. This one over here, over the right, is called a komon, which basically translates as little pattern. Well, obviously this pattern is kind of big, but this is a just regular kind of day-to-day -day kimono. 
you can kind of compare it to a pair of, I don't know, jeans with a nice shirt on top of it. This kind of formality you can compare it to. This one has a rose pattern, which means I can only wear it in spring. And this one on the left is called a yukata, like the one that I'm wearing now. Again, uh, it's a summer cotton kimono. This one has a more multi-seasonal um, pattern on it. And the fabric is really, really soft, which is kind of a trademark for cotton. This one over here is synthetic. Also, it has a lining, which this one doesn't have. Yeah, these are the most the, the types of kimono that you will mostly wear. And there is another one I wanted to show you. This all black one. This is actually a funeral kimono. Well, this one is uh, that I bought for a, a Halloween project, so it won't stay this for a very long time. This one will also have crests on them. Again, same places as the Kuro Thomas one, but this one has no pattern at all. Nothing. Just nothing. Well, Kuro Tome and Iro Tome. Iro means color. You have two varieties of the Kuro Tome Sode. The black one and a colored one. I don't have a colored one since they tend to be small and that those I just don't fit, sadly. Uh, the will also have just design on the bottom part like the other one. So yeah, you would only wear it if, if a relative has recently died. The relative itself would wear just pure white. No embroidery, no woven designs or anything. Just this, this one, but then in a white color. So there you go. And lastly, I would want to show you a more special type of kimono that I have. So I'll just show you now. So this is the last one that I wanted to show you and that I personally own. This is called a hikizuri or susuhiki, depends on what term you kind of prefer. This is actually a stage costume that you wear on, on stage. Also, uh, Michael and Geiko wear a kind of similar one. This one is two meters long. Yes, two meters. <laughs> I believe that's six and a half feet or something. You might want to check on that. I'm not very familiar with the imperial system. This one is actually technically a lengthened kimono because the original kimono ends there and they reattach this fabric along with a padded hem. This hem has padding up to here to make sure that it trails nicely around on the ground. This is actually one of four Hikizuri that I own. This one is actually one of my favorites, to be honest. Well, so yeah, that was actually all of the types of kimono that I wanted to show you. So there you go, that is basically most of the kimono types that I own. Actually, I forgot one um, between Iromuchi and Komon, there is a type called Edo Komon. It basically is that up close, like very up close, like almost here, you can see there is a very very small pattern, but if you were just looking at the distance you wouldn't see any pattern at all. It came to existence when the, 
well, actually the, the higher power, were banning all lavish kimono and techniques and such. So they had to come up with a kind of way to still use pattern on kimono. And that is basically just how Edo Komo came to exist in Edo, which is nowadays Tokyo. So that they could have small patterns on their kimono, but so, so, so tiny that you wouldn't easily recognize them. I personally don't have them, but I will show you down in the below. Actually, um, in one of the Begin Japanology programs, they showed how Edo Komo look like. So I'll post a link down below with where you can find it so that you can see how they look like. That indeed, other than that, yeah, just the bridal ones, the Kakashita, which are the bridal fuso there, and the Uchikaika, which is the rope worn on top of that. Those I don't own, but other than that, it's kind of all of the formalities that are out there. So I thank you very much for watching and I hope you see you next time. Bye bye.